There's not many cars you can get for mid 50,000s with 505 brake horsepower and performance figures that will take on something like a Porsche 911 in a drag race. But that's what the Tesla Model 3 Performance can do. Now, while the entry level version of this car is 43,000 euro, there's also a long range version. This is the one that petrol heads will want because it does not a 16 little over three seconds. It's really stupidly quick in performance mode. And today we're gonna to have a little look around and see is, is it still a great value performance car, albeit electric. Welcome to Nobby on Cars. So we know the new facelift version of this car is coming uh, next year, but this car essentially still looks like a Model 3 performance that I would have reviewed a few years ago. Now, the wheels are standard, the white color is standard. I do think it's a little bit scabby that Tesla charged two and a half thousand euro for the beautiful looking red. It's 1200 quid for the white leather. You can't get matrix uh, headlights on the front, but they are very, very good, you know, really bright, white, crisp headlights. But I do find at nighttime, you're kind of dazzling people a little bit. I thought I was gonna get the dreaded flash. I think it's a much better looking car than uh, the Model Y, if I'm, if I'm being honest with you. It's just, it's, it's so aerodynamic looking. You know, people wonder how do Tesla manage to get such efficient cars? Well, look at the design of it. Love the alloys. Um, they are very, very easy to curb. In fact, someone has had a go at them before I picked it up. Um, albeit, this is a brand new car. There's like 130 kilometers on it when I picked it up. So the performance model, you'll know because it has the red Tesla brake calibers inside. Uh, and genuinely, this is a car that will take on the Porsche Taycan, the Audi e-tron RS. Probably not quite the RS, but certainly the standard uh, GT car, which is still 460 brake horsepower. So this has a little bit more. Uh, shout out to Holt, by the way, this is possibly the most scenic place I've ever filmed a car. And then coming around to the back, um, it's exactly the same. You, you get the uh, carbon fibre boot lid on the car. So that's nice, I suppose, that they, they've added that. It's another way you'll spot that this is a slightly different version of a, a Model 3. Uh, the door handles, people generally get used to them, but um, it does take people a little bit of a little while. And this is obviously dual motored, so that's another uh, spot of how you can tell on the back. So basically power to the front, power to the rear. Boot opens electrically. Um, just to give you an idea, this is like literally such a brand new car that the, I take the wrapper off the granny cable. I was trying to get a sneaky charge somewhere last night. Um, so yes, we do have a frunk up front. There's the type two cable, which uh, literally hasn't been opened. So it's, it's pretty handy they have storage down there. I mean, it's a decent enough space boot. Obviously it's a saloon car, so the aperture is always a little bit you know, a little bit stressful, a little bit anxiety inducing, but not really any different to the BMW 3 Series. Then when you want to charge your car, you just tap this here and the charging port opens. Incidentally, uh, obviously the Tesla supercharger network is fantastic and it's actually quite cheap compared to ESB. 76 usable uh, kilowatt hour battery size, 250 DC charging speed, that's the max. And that means if you precondition your battery, which you can in these cars, you'll get from 47 to about 350 kilometers in 25 minutes. So really, really quick. I did ask Tesla and Sandyford where I picked this car up from, what's the lead time? So a Model Y is less than four weeks, a Model 3 is about four weeks. They seem to have stopped doing the deliveries in three month bursts. But I went onto the Tesla website, which is kind of annoying. You go tesla.ie and then it brings you to a place where you have to pick different worldwide regions. Just tesla.ie, I want Ireland, yeah? So if you try and do your own uh, spec Model 3 performance, it's January, February, 2024 according to the website. Now maybe they have something in stock, whatever, it's worth trying. Um, let's have a little look around the inside. Not a huge amount has changed though. So you have the flat floor, of course you do. Uh, wipeable materials on the back of the seats because I wiped them yesterday and my kids have still destroyed them again. Uh, two USB-C charging ports. Uh, up here then you have a, a tea bar sort of for your glass roof. Two ambient lights up there. This is obviously the black. So not the white 1200 euro extra uh, spec seats. And it's still a very, very nice material finish. There is uh, an armrest in here. So knock yourself out there. No access to the rear from a ski hatch point of view. Maybe Elon isn't a skier. Although I don't know. I don't know. So that is the rear of the Model 3. Exactly the same as a, a standard car. Doesn't matter if this is a performance. There's no other way of telling inside. Business as usual, not like a BYD. The screen does not go into portrait mode, but it, it is 
massively big. You don't, I mean, it just can't get any bigger. Everything is behind this. So whether it's your dash cam capabilities, which in fact, I don't know if you download this resolution, is it better? It's all right, um, but I love the, the different angles. I'll just see if I can get you a different driving perspective. So it has your rear, the sides. Um, I think I was coming up to the car earlier on. Maybe I'm gone now. No one needs to see that anyway. But it's, it's just great to have that. Obviously you've got sentry mode as well. It does drain the battery though if you have sentry mode on. So that obviously records when you're not there. And with the Tesla app, you can view the car's stream wherever you are. It's incredible. Like this, it tells you the PSI, the tires, really is very, very good um, in terms of the connectivity. So you've got all the usuals, the, the games. I've actually, I think I've switched. I, Beach Buggy Racing 2, that my kids love that. I'm loving Skyforce Reloaded. Let me know what, you, what is your favorite Tesla game while you're waiting to charge. Obviously you can watch Netflix. Um, but everything is also controlled by this screen. So if you're not a fan of climate control behind the screens, then this might annoy you. But look, it's pretty easy to use. I do love dog mode. So you set this up when you get out of the car, you can leave your dog inside. Apparently it doesn't stand up in court, but it does work. I mean, on a really hot summer's day, I don't know, it would go against the grain really in, th in terms of thinking of leaving your car in, or leaving your dog in a car, leaving your car in a dog. Um, but it, it's there and can be used. Um, the settings of the car all in here. So you have your, your creep mode in terms of uh, driving. Uh, you can dial back the performance a little bit if, if you wish. Uh, autopilot, you can go up to seven and a half thousand euro in terms of what you want to spend on that. It's an awful lot of money. Um, trips, so literally 377 uh, kilometers on this car. The last trip, I was doing about 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. They do watt hours and kilometers. Not as efficient as a Model 3. I've, I saw that too, sort of 14, 15. Um, and it's not like it's cold. It is 19 degrees, but yeah, generally about 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. For the performance of the car, I think that's not bad. Uh, all the time for the charging. And you can do all this on your app as well. So. There's very little that's here that you can't do on the app, which to be fair is quite impressive. So all going on there. The nav, so easy to use. You want to find a supercharger, it'll precondition the car for you on the way. That's the only screen, nothing else here. Uh, space for stuff down here as usual and the two wireless charging pads, which is very, very handy. There are a bunch of people though that I do feel like I have to represent in this video and they are kind of slightly longer Model 3 performance owners, or any Tesla owners for that fact, but this car in particular was not far off 70,000 euro just a few short years ago. And if you'd bought one of them over the let's, let's, let's call it two years, you'd be looking at about 1,200 euro depreciation every month just because they've dropped the price to what it's at. And there's a massive thing in the motor industry where you, know, you want to hang on to your customers and you do everything you can to not upset them. And I feel like, as great as the competition is, and if you'd bought a more recent one, you're chuffed with yourself, um, you'd be kind of annoyed, wouldn't you? There's a lot of sensors on this car, so it, it will beep. It will tell you, uh, actually frustratingly, that you're too close to a car beside you on a motorway, so you're using the radar cruise. This is not full autopilot or anything, it won't steer it for you, but it, it will keep up with the car in front. But then, if you get near a car beside you, it just eases off and suddenly reduces the power because it thinks that car is actually in front of you, the car behind you is going, what are you doing? And yeah, you're kind of constantly correcting the cruise control on a motorway. That's, that's a frustration um, that I found. Something that isn't frustrating is the supercharger network. You're not always going to rely on them, but when you know they're there, it's just a lovely comfort blanket if that's the if that's the right way of of putting it because i plugged in with about 30 kilometers uh, left in the morning went off and grabbed a coffee nursed a hangover for genuinely about 29 minutes and i came back and it was 400 kilometers in the car and just no one else really can compete with that even the the cost of the superchargers isn't as expensive as the likes of vsb so it's another thing to consider. As I said, most of the time with an EV, you're going to uh, have this thing plugged in at home because that's just what's convenient for you. But it's nice to know they're there. These cars are famous for their... That, that burst. I mean, it, it's enough 
of a torque feeling that actually gets you in the pit of your stomach and that's as someone who's in control you know when you're pressing the accelerator for passengers it's just like oh jesus it's like it really is properly insanely quick you know and that never probably really never gets tiring it's only a part of driving the car now that said even into bends there's a little bit of fun to be had there as well you know you've got all those batteries on board but they're they're low down nice center of gravity so it's actually it handles pretty well it is hard over certain services like this is a lovely smooth road so it's fine uh, but potholes and just in imperfect road conditions that that gets a little bit bumpy and a little bit oh but again name me a performance car and that's what this is you know the the statistics on paper it's a performance car name me one uh, that isn't a little bit firm a little bit hired on on certain road surfaces the bmw m2 i was in a few weeks ago you can't compare them but that was that was definitely a more harsh car the fact that you got the games and all the entertainment to just keep bored minds occupied if you're charging or you're outside waiting for a kid's sporting lesson to be over it's nice to have them um even now like the new bmw i5 will come with games and i don't know if i prefer the idea because you'll use your phone for control pads and that uh, whereas in this obviously the steering wheel is part of the buggy racing for example so it just shows you like how cars are only really catching up now um in, in certain respects with with tesla the standard car is quick enough you know that electric torque is always on tap there is something i like you know you have a porsche taycan and again i i'm not comparing because you, you can't you know the interior of this is never going to match a porsche for example it's just one aspect obviously the porsche looks better and all that stuff but you know you're paying multiples of the price of this car for that performance that really in traffic you're not going to massively use anyway um so it's something to think about you know if you want a performance car on a budget then this is still a pretty interesting uh, proposition as far as i'm concerned i love the the entertainment like the way you just connect your spotify or you use tune in and you can listen to stations all around the world without having to mess around with phones and stuff like that that's, that's a bit annoying you know like having to do that and it's all just seamless in here it's kind of your own inbuilt spotify so even if someone's messing with your account at home it's not interfering so this you know this there's lots of little quirky bits to this car aside from driving it that kind of make it a pleasurable and you know an, an interesting ownership experience economy is really good so like teslas are kind of famous for their efficiency yes this is the dual motor all-wheel drive 505 brake horsepower so you're not quite getting the 13 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that you will see but i'm telling you i was doing motorways yesterday and this thing was doing 16 now it's unseasonably mild for october it's like it's 19 degrees yesterday 20 degrees it's 15 degrees now but i'm still getting if i just check the uh, consumption like 16.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in a again a 505 brake horsepower if you do enjoy the performance a bit more it's more like 22 but it's it's not often you're going to see that if the move to electric is something that maybe is unavoidable for you or you're just interested in it and you're coming from a background of having a car that's a bit of crack maybe you've had a golf or maybe you've had a golf gti maybe you've had a focus st i know again you can't compare this does not make any noise when you bury that throttle but my god very few of those cars will give you that level of insane acceleration uh, again it's like 3.3 seconds to 60. Um, if this is somewhere where your kind of next car journey, I hate that expression, uh, has to go, then I think you'd be happy enough, you know, getting into something like this. Like, get the nice wheels on it, it looks all right. And again, that, that performance is just always on tap, so it's something you'll have a bit of crack in. But as I mentioned earlier on, uh, the people who bought this car for quite a bit more in the last few years pretty annoyed so thanks for coming with me this far today tesla are such a funny company because there's so much noise from elon musk you kind of forget sometimes they just they make cars 
and they're really good cars um, as EVs go. They have their fans, they have their diehard fanboys, they have their haters. I'm kind of just in the middle. I'm just judging that as a car, performance-wise, price-wise, really importantly, there's still very good value in them. Get you might want to buy this one now because the facelift is on the way and it, they're kind of like Apple, the price is the price. So it's not like you're gonna be able to probably walk in and go, oh, there's a new model coming, can I get some money off that? I mean, you can try, but it probably won't work. Um, but as a straight out performance car that just happens to be electric, it's still an awful lot of fun. And just get yourself into a 24 hour test drive in one and see what you think. Uh, what are your thoughts? Have you owned one? Have you had a Model 3? Would you go again? A lot of criticism about build quality over the years. It does feel like it's getting better. So uh, have you maybe been in a couple of Teslas as an owner at this stage? And would you back that statement up? Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.